So I love almost everything about this duo drill press. Almost. It's the key word here. There's one thing that I don't love about this, and I'm going to show you in just a second, and we'll go about fixing it. Hopefully we will. We're going to try to in the most complicated and time-consuming way possible. So I have two of these drill presses in case you didn't know. One is 100% manual, the one over to my left. This one is a power down feed version, which is really nice. Um, you know, it drills the hole for you. It's got four speeds for, depending on how fast you want to drill down. It's a gear driven head. Both of these are gear driven heads. They're a dry gear case with phenolic gears. So they're a little noisy. Other than that, they're awesome drill presses. Now this one does not suffer, or, sorry, this one suffers from a problem that the other one doesn't. They're made exactly by the same people. They're just a little different models. So I'm kind of surprised to find that this one has this issue, but you know it does. So we're gonna have to sort that out. It's just a problem that we need to sort out. It doesn't mean I don't love this thing, because I do. But, you know, no relationship perfect. So let me show you what the problem is and we'll go about We'll go about fixing it, hopefully. So what I'd like for you to do is zoom your eyes down really close on this table and see if just you can see anything wrong with it before I tell you what the problem is. See, other than this, no. Problem with this mill table is that they never finish machined the T-slots and they are off size. They finish the foot of this machine and it takes this T-nut here. What size is this? I don't know. I, off the top of my head, I can't tell you the size, but it's this one. The other or other drill press takes this T-nut in the base and in the table, and its table, which is identical to this one, has finished machined slots. This one, was it made on a Friday? Was it made on a Monday? I'm not for sure. Was it made right before a holiday? Probably. And they forgot to machine the T-slots to size. Could I make a custom one? Yes. Am I gonna? No. Custom T-slot, or custom T-nuts, that is. Because I don't want to have to deal with that. I want to take my hardware from my other drill press and put it right on this table without having to change out T-nuts to adapt to this sloppy slot. So that, I think, makes sense. So what I'm going to do, or what I'm going to attempt to do, because I don't know if it'll work, is I'm going to take this table off of this drill press and mount it on the milling machine, and we are going to finish machine these T-slots to the, where they'll accept this T-nut. So let's do that. What is it? Oh, she's so excited. Where's your bone? Where's your bone at? Ready? Get it! <laughs> oh, you got it. Can I see it? Oh, I'm gonna get it. Oh, oh, I grabbed it. Oh, ow. Ready? Oh, yeah, you got it, didn't you? Little girl.
Check out all that casting sand that's left in this. So all I'm going to do is a quick check. Got this set up on here. It's not clamped down or anything. It's just sitting on here. Big no-go arm, flat base, big flat base on my indicator. Because this table's got a lot of little dents and divots in it, I don't want the small end that you normally use. I don't want it reading all of that and creating a bunch of noise up here. I want the average of the top of this table. That's why we're using the big flat base. So all I'm going to do is move the table right to left, see if the top of this table is parallel with the base, the part that's actually sitting on the mill table. If it is, good. If it's not, we'll shim and adjust. Then, you know, I'll clamp it down lightly. Then I'll tap it around, and I have to also get the T-slots, the, these rough cut slots. I've got to get those in line as well. But first, I want to make sure and see what I need to do just right to left with this table. That is pretty good. I'm hitting my limit switch. Oh, wow. Is it really that good already? Good enough. So in my handy dandy machinist handbook here, this is my favorite, the one that I grab when I do most things. It's the older version. If I need some modern information, I grab a, a newer book, but most of the stuff in here obviously hasn't changed. But this one was signed by Richard H. Green on February 11, 1961, before I was even a thought. And I stuck a four-leaf clover in there. But for our T-slots, we are going to be cutting five-eighths T-slots in this table. And in here, it gives the dimensions for the T-nut and the T-slot, the tolerances, right? Because they figured out a long time ago that if you machine the T-slot to the same size as the T-nut, you're going to have problems because we've all dealt with full T-slots and the nuts getting jammed up and if you cut them to the sizes that they recommend, you're less likely to have any problems. We're not going to try to modify these, right? They know what works. So let's go over to the other drill table. We'll quickly measure those just for, just for a quick 
check, but I'm almost certain they're five eighths. Then we'll get tooled up in the dewall and we will cut these T-slots. So in the machinist handbook, the tolerances on T-slots are pretty relaxed. They just need to be pretty close. So we've got an adjustable parallel here. I'm just gonna pull some numbers off of this table just for reference. Starrett, adjustable parallel. Love these little things. So I'm gonna stick that down in the slot and expand it if I can. Pull it up and measure it. it should be basically 5 eighths, and it is 0.626. And now I'm going to measure the bottom of the slot, the actual top of the T, I guess is what you'd call it. I just got a fixed parallel here because I can't get a bigger adjustable down in there because of the table. So put that in there, stick this adjustable down in there, and expand it. Break down the setup and measure. Yeah, basically 1.1 inch. So, you know, there's several dimensions here. We're not going to go through them all, but you get the idea. Just going to try to mimic what this table has because it works really well. About an inch deep overall. There we go. Let's go over to the Dewall drill press. Drill press milling machine get set up to cut the slots on the other drill table. So the first thing that I'm going to do is just go through these slots with a 5 8 carbide stubby end mill. Just going to buzz through them both, just kind of center up on them and buzz through them. That's all. Get them to 5 8 So about 700 RPM on our end mill and about 8 inches per minute as far as the feed. That's what I'm thinking. That should do the trick. I'm not going to run any coolant on this top section, but I'll probably run coolant when I use uh, the high-speed steel T-slot cutter. So there is one slot, at least the top of one slot anyway. Nice, nice fit. If anything, it's a hair on the tight side. It's okay, it's 5 eighths. Could be this, this nut. 
that looks pretty good. It cleaned up relatively decent on both sides. Got a little bit of the casting showing down here in this corner, which you may not be able to see, but it looks good. And that's going to work. Now I'm going to center up on this front slot here, do the same thing to it. So I pulled out the carbide end mill that we had in here to finish up the tops of the slots and I replaced it with, this happens to be a high speed steel T-slot end mill, so I'm gonna have to be real careful with it. It is the only one that I got. So I'm gonna center it up on the slot, which it already is, and I'm gonna go pretty slow through here because this is gonna be removing a decent amount of material. It cuts at the top, it cuts at the bottom, and obviously it cuts along the sides. So it'll almost get me to finish size in one pass. Hopefully this will survive this whole table. Like I mentioned, it's the only one I got and it's high speed steel. So pretty rough, this old table. So I'm just gonna take it easy on this thing and you know, try to keep it alive. So I was going to run coolant with this, but I just decided I didn't want to I didn't want to contaminate my coolant with all this cast iron dust. It should be okay as long as I run slow. So I decided to stop and run some air on this thing. Not that much air. She don't sound too healthy.
So when you're cutting cast iron and it sounds like kind of like this, that's that's good. You know, not not anything out of the ordinary, nice hiss noise. But when you're cutting cast iron with a high speed end mill and it starts sounding like this, you know you get a glass hard area of cast iron and that is the gasping last breath of whatever end mill you were running on it. Unless it's carbide, you've lost some edges. Goodness, that was a tough T-slot to cut. Looks like, I'll show you, I'll get you a shot, but it looks like maybe the sprues were in the slot or something and it is hard as glass in two spots on, on this slot. And I'm hoping the back one's not the same, but it, it probably will be. It chewed that cutter up as well. I thought it was my last one, I was getting worried. And then I found this one which has a broken tooth on it. But other than that, it's sharp and that broken tooth, won't, it won't hurt anything. Long as it finishes out this other one, I'll be happy. But I didn't show it, but I went through this slot four times. Um, the reason for that is because this cutter's a little small and I have to offset. I did the bottom, did the top. First, I went through the direct center, right? So five times I had to go through this slot, directly through the center offset to the side, offset to the side on the bottom, then bring it up to the top. Does that make sense? Right? I didn't want to show all that, but you get the idea. To get the slot to where it's to the factory size, works nice, five passes. Chewed up that cutter, and now it's time to swap out cutters and do that back one, and hopefully it'll be, it won't be any worse than this one, or else, I'm in trouble. So check out this cutter after one T-slot on this table, after cutting one T-slot. You can see the heat, the heat uh, signature there on the bottom of this tooth, all of the ones down low. The, I'll show you the glass hard spots in the T-slot here in just a second. But the top of the cutter survived pretty well, so the important part of the slot, perfectly fine. I don't care if it's got a small radius in the bottom, bottom corner. There we go. So glass hard uh, cast iron will do to a high speed steel cutter. It'll chew them up. So see that shiny spot there? That's glass hard uh, cast iron. And then we got another spot here. And them being spaced like that's what may make me think maybe it was a sprue where they poured this table. But I'm not for sure. All I know is that those two spots is what chewed up that cutter.
should be it. Should be it. So there was hard spots in this one too, basically yeah, in the same spot as the other. There we go. T-slots complete. I'm gonna run a file over these razor sharp edges. I guess I could um, use an angled cutter, like a, a center drill, not a center drill, but a deburring tool. Just run down these edges. It's been done on this table, actually. See the how they relieved that sharp edge of the top of the T-slots, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna file these and call that good enough. So I'm glad I decided not to run coolant. All this super fine cast iron dust, it would have got sucked right down into the foot of this machine and mixed with my coolant, and then I would have been circulating, you know, uh, cast iron dust in my coolant and it wouldn't have been good at all. Would it have made these cutters last? It, I mean, both of these are trashed now. This one had a broken tooth, so it didn't matter anyway, and the first one that I used was dull. Both of them are old cutters, so. Maybe it would have helped a little, but these glass hard spots in this table, it wouldn't have mattered with coolant with or without. It wouldn't have helped that high speed cutter survive. Really, the only thing that would probably survive that is carbide, and I don't have a carbide a T slot cutter. So I think we done good just to get through those two slots. All right, so there's a decent look at the slots to size. Not plenty of clearance in there, so we don't have to worry about one chip getting in there and you know jamming up the works. You can see those hard spots really good now. I thought I was getting smarter on this second row, and I went in with the die grinder and tried to grind them away, but I I didn't get it all, and it didn't seem to help not one bit. I should have just left it alone and let that damaged cutter just chew through it like the first one did, and uh, just accepted the fact that it ruined two cutters. But, you know, it was, it was worth it. Those were old cutters, and uh, most people would have probably trashed them. They were pretty, pretty sorry shape. So they did the trick, got our drill table T-slots to size. Most important part about these T-slots is that the top, where they engage this section of the nut here, is parallel with the top of the table. And it is. So I'm super happy. So now I can use the same T-nuts in this as I do the other do-all drill press. Same T-nut works in the other milling machine and it works in the do-all bandsaw. So no special T-nut required. And they're nice and smooth on the inside instead of all rough cast like they were. Boom. I can't tell you how much better that makes me feel. Just knowing that now I can clamp stuff to this table without uh, worrying about losing my fingers and stuff. Silly girl. <laughs> now, look what I can do. I can actually clamp stuff to the drill table.
Boom. All the way through that chunk, uh, 4140. Just stopped twice to clean it out. I didn't want to break the drill. Man, that's nice. Now, I don't have to worry so much. So those T-slots look pretty good, if you ask me. And thank you for watching me and Cora finish them out. I can't tell you how much I appreciate a drill that has a nice big table like this and functioning T-slots. Why in the world would they have not finished these out? I couldn't tell you. <laughs> uh, because nothing really fit in them well. They were so rough cast that even the smaller T-nuts just went in there all crazy and barely fit. You know what a rough cast surface feels like. And that's what these T-slots were. They were pretty much unusable. So now that they are, I can use this drill press for things that I wanted to use it in the past for, but just didn't because I couldn't really clamp anything to the table. It was all, you know, holding the vise in the hand, which is never really a good thing. So glad to get those cut to size. So that's it for this week. So thanks for watching. Viewers, patrons, subscribers, anybody who's helped me out whatsoever, it is much appreciated. So that's it. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time.